So we have two small balls, P and Q. We're given the masses, 2M and M. So then the mass or the weight of the 2M would be 2MG. I'll just draw that on. And then for Q, that would be KMG. And then we're told that K is less than two. So therefore, this is the heavier mass. The whole thing will go around in this direction then. It says the system is held at rest. The string is taut and the string is vertical. We're told it's released from rest and then P moves downwards with an acceleration of this. So let's draw that on. The acceleration of P would be 5G over seven. It says the balls are modeled as particles moving freely. The string is light and inextensible and the pulley is small and smooth. So if the pulley is smooth, that means the tension is the same in both parts. So T, T, these are the upward forces on P and Q. And for the first part of the question, we're trying to find, in terms of M and G, the tension in the string. So let's set up our equations of motion for both particles. So for P, we know the acceleration is downwards, therefore the resultant force is downwards. 2mg must therefore be bigger than T. The overall downwards force will then be 2mg minus T, that's the resultant force. And if that's the resultant force, it's equal to ma. The m in this case is 2m, and the a is 5g over 7. And then for q, its acceleration is upwards, 5g over 7. So then the tension must be the bigger force. If it's accelerating upwards, the resultant force must be upwards. t must be the bigger force. And then T minus kmg will be the overall upwards force. And that will be equal to the mass of Q, which is km, multiplied by its acceleration, 5g over 7. And we're trying to find the tension in the string in terms of m and g. So let's look at the equations that we have. We might have to solve simultaneously. So if we look at the second equation, this one has an unknown in it, or an extra unknown in it, which is k. So if we actually just use the first equation, this one, it says in our question we want to get the tension in terms of m and g. So if we rearrange that first equation, the one for p, rearrange it for t, we end up with t is equal to 2mg minus, so 2 times 5 is 10, so it'd be 10mg over 7. And if we did 2 minus 10 over 7, that gives us 4 over 7. So we end up with t being 4 over 7 mg. So we didn't actually need to use the equation of motion for q to work this first bit out. So for part b, the question says, explain why the acceleration of q also has a magnitude of 5g over 7. Well, the reason for that is because we're modeling our string to be inextensible. So what that means is we can't stretch our string. If you imagine that the string that we had here had some give to it, let's say it's a piece of rubber, then what happens is whenever you pull P down, if you pull it down quite quickly, the rubber would stretch and it would take a split second before Q catches up in speed. But if this is, let's say, a thin steel wire, which doesn't really stretch, then if you pull P down by a centimeter, then Q will go up by a centimeter in pretty much the exact same time as the string does not stretch significantly. So if the string is inextensible, it doesn't stretch. So whatever the motion of P is as you pull it down or as it accelerates downwards would be the exact same motion of Q, but upwards. So on to part C. C is asking us to find the value of K. So if we look back to the equations that we worked out in part A, well, we have the tension, 4 over 7 mg. This was our equation that involved K. So let's put these two things together. Let's put the tension into that equation, and then we can rearrange it for k. So t is 4 over 7 mg. Take away kmg, and that's equal to this. I'm just going to rewrite that as 5 over 7 kmg. Now all of these terms have a factor of mg in them, so I'm going to divide the entire thing by mg, and then they will all cancel. mg, 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 they will cancel. And then we end up with 4 over 7 minus k is equal to 5 over 7k. 
To make things simple here, I'm going to times everything by 7. So 4 minus 7k is equal to 5k. Bring the 7k over, we end up with 4 is equal to 12k. And finally, k is 4 over 12 or 1 over 3. And that is part C done. For part D, identify one limitation of the model that will affect the accuracy of your answer to part C. Okay, so let's think about what we did in part C. In part C, we used our tension that we worked out from part A. We got that tension from the motion of P, the equation of motion of P. We then subbed that into the equation of motion of Q. So let's try and think about well, what are the assumptions that we had that enabled us to do that. Well, one of them is that we assumed the tension in P, or acting on P, is the same as the tension acting on Q. If that weren't the case, we wouldn't have been able to have subbed this into there. So we're assuming the tensions are the same. And the tensions would be the same for a couple of reasons. One, if the friction, if the pulley had no friction, then that means that whatever force we apply on one string must be the force on the other string. If you imagine you had like a very rusty pulley, even if you pulled this side of the string very hard, there might not be much force being transmitted to the right side because some of the force will be lost in the pulley or opposed in the pulley. Similarly, if the string itself has some mass, then the tension will vary along the string. As you can imagine, if the string was quite heavy, the tension here wouldn't be that big because that string just has to support the mass beneath it. But the tension up here will be much higher, or higher at least, because that part of the string has to support not only this mass, but it has to also support the weight of that string beneath it. But if the string didn't have significant mass, if, we model, if we're modeling it as light, then that would mean the tension across one side of the string would be the same. And if the pulley is smooth, that tension then carries over to the next side of the string, or the other side of the string, and then therefore to mass Q. Now the question asks for one limitation of the model, so I'm just going to talk about the friction in the pulley. 